when you look at the Bible the way that Jesus actually viewed the Bible, the way that the first followers of Jesus actually viewed the Bible, you come to understand that there's actually two voices in the Bible. And Jesus was addressing those two voices and say the retributive voice is not, is not the real true God, but the restorative voice is the real true God. And so when I look at those two things, restorative justice versus, uh, versus retributive, I look at it through that lens of uh, it's okay to, to give ourselves permission to divide uh, the retributive narratives in the Bible from the restorative narratives in the Bible. And you realize that the retributive narratives, when you do that, are tied to what many people call sacred violence or violent sacrificial religion. And Jesus is actually opposing that, contradicting that, deconstructing that, as well as some of the prophets too. So you you get you see that the what the what Jesus is claiming and other voices are claiming is the real true voice of God is the restorative one. And that's why that's a superior way, because the retributive one, when you deconstruct it, is terribly violent, genocidal even. I mean, it's just crazy, the things that God is attributed in doing. Uh, but when you look at the restorative justice, then you're seeing something, something beautiful. Uh, you know, the prodigal son, the uh, loving your enemies, uh, they were trying to restore people uh, to to um, uh, right standing or or to a place where they're actually loving people and they leave their their wrongdoing or their or their uh, harming others and that's a very beautiful thing. Most people, when they think about that, yeah, that's a that's a better way to to just do punishment for punishment's sake, to uh, be retributive and to. Uh, look for solutions to society's problems with evil and wrongdoing by punishing or capital punishment or you know non-restorative prison sentences or wars and then the ultimate retribution sending people to eternal conscious torment that just makes no sense when you compare it to the restorative justice narratives restorative justice means Looking at the prison system differently, Norway has a completely different prison system. I mean, it just it will just blow you away when you hear about what they do. They they um, they train their uh, prison guards. I think it's like three years or something. It's they're, they're trained in how to have a rehabilitative uh, approach to working in a prison. How to actually re rehabilitate people to bring them through a, um, an experience where they're forced to deal with what they've done wrong, but they're helping them change in the, inside so that, so that they won't have an intent to do wrong in the future. And uh, it's totally different from the way that we think about prisons. I mean, there, there are some people who are working for criminal justice reform in, 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 the, in, in the United States, and they're making progress, but there's a long way to go, and it's still a wide, uh, a gap between what we do and what uh, Norway does, for example. One of the things I bring out in Breaking Bad Faith, which the subtitle is um, Exposing Myth and Violence in Popular Theology to Recover the Path of Peace. So one of the things I bring out is um, the path of peace, you know, evangelicalism has, in my mind, has totally misrepresented what that is. It's all about, you know, getting saved and the ticket to heaven and, you know, getting out of uh, going to hell and being right with God and believing all the Bible and, and, all, and, and following religious codes of conduct, etc. And, um, but when you, when you uh, deconstruct the infallibility of the Bible, you're going to have that, you're going to discover that the, um, the restorative uh, justice and the love ethic of Christ is, like I said before, is what matters most. And you're going to discover that there are many ways that you can uh, you can walk that path of peace, trying to love and restore people, love your enemy, 
So you approach things in different ways. And in my book, I give um, four examples. Uh, we'll actually give more than that, but the four I'll mention are um, four examples of, of an institution or people, individuals, putting this restorative justice or love ethic uh, towards uh, enemies in, in practice and actually restoring people. And the, uh, the first one was, I already mentioned, talked about was the Norway's prison system. But there, there's uh, three other ones I'll, I'll mention uh, that I go into in the book. Um, a guy named Daryl Davis, a black man. Uh, if you Googled him, you'd see him, you'd find him. There's a documentary about him. Basically, he started to hang out with Ku Klux Klansmen to find out why do they hate me without knowing me? And he began to realize, hey, I can, I, I have a desire to know that so much. I'm willing to be, uh, try to befriend these people and, and find out what's going on. Make a long story short, he influenced uh, more than 200 Ku Klux Klansmen to give up their robes because he took the time to do that. And it was a risk because in the beginning he thought, he, he wasn't sure if his, uh, his life was in danger or not. So. Um, that's one example. Another one, a Jewish couple. Um, I talk in the book about this couple that they, they were threatened by an anti-Semite white nationalist. And instead of just condemning the guy, basically reached out to him, challenged him, which Daryl Davis did too. It was a, both cha a strategy of challenging them, and, but trying to treat them with dignity. And in this particular case, a Jewish couple won, won the person over eventually, and they um, actually converted to Judaism. <laughs> it was an amazing story. And then the, finally, the, the, the final example is a, a Muslim couple, who, uh, uh, an Iraq war veteran who came back from war bitter about you know, his experiences and really programmed to hate Muslims, came back and was having mental health issues and really going off the deep end wanted to bomb the mosque and he walked into the mosque to scout it out one day and he met this muslim couple who were leaders in the mosque and this was in indiana and uh they did the same thing they they treated him with dignity and kindness and and believed that that's what god wanted them to how to treat everyone and um he got one over and so eventually he actually converted to Islam and became a leader in the mosque. So the, those stories are just dramatic examples of how instead of being retributive and you know trying to uh, equal the scales and get back at people and use reciprocal punishment or reciprocal violence to, to bring harmony, you actually just reach out with, with a love ethic and, and, and kindness and you can actually restore people and it works.